Hi, my friends. Welcome to a new episode of our series, History of the Church. Today, we are going to continue talking about the monastic life. What are the ranks of the monks? Do monks have ranks? Yes, they have ranks. Are they different than the clerical ranks in the church, the priests, the bishops, the archbishop, etc.? Yes, they are different. So what are the ranks and how they are specified? The ranks of the monks are depending on the spiritual level of each monk and the, how many years he or she spent in the monastic life. And we have in our Coptic Orthodox Church seven ranks for the monks. The first rank is called the novice or commonly known as the monk under supervision or under test. In the Coptic language it is also called pistos which means the believer. According to the laws of the church set by Pope Ioannis uh, the 19th, the Patriarch number 112 in the Coptic Orthodox Church, the novice should stay in the monastery for three years before he or she can be ordained as a monk or a nun. During this period, the novice is examined for his spiritual commitment, his ability to stay in the monastery, his obedience, his chastity, his poverty, the vows of the monastic life, and after those three years, if he uh, or she is not able to continue in the monastery, they can return back, maybe the monastic life is not their calling, or they will continue and through the guidance and through the recommendation of their spiritual fathers, they can be ordained to be monks. And this will take us to the second rank of the monasticism or the monastic life, which is the monk. The monk, uh, once ordained according to the Cenobite system found by Saint Petronius, he should or she, or she should follow a, a spiritual canon every day in their life, including praying the seven hourly prayers, doing 300 metania, spending their time between prayers, studying of the Holy Scriptures, and uh, the manual labor. In the era of Saint Petronius, the monk who did not work any manual labor was supposed to leave the monastery and does not continue there. The third rank is called the worshipper. In this rank, the monk prays in addition to the seven hourly prayers and the 300 metania, he should also pray 72 psalms and spend more time in prayers, staying in his cell more and more maybe he can stay there for one complete week. The fourth rank is called the ascetic, and this term was firstly used in referral to Saint Macarius. In this rank, the monk usually, in, in addition to the previous things we said, he should also pray 150 psalms in addition to 500 metanias. And this rank also, the worshipper is supposed to, to speak only seven words each day, he does not eat meat and he can fast whole week or even much longer. Noting that these ranks are gradually gained, no one can jump from one rank to another based on his own thought, but they are gradually gained under the supervision of the spiritual father of the monk or the nun. The next rank is called the anchorite. This rank is usually reached when the monk or a nun are above 50 years old. And they usually wear something called the scheme. The scheme is a Coptic word means a shape, and it is a string of plated leather with crosses in equal distances, and it surrounds the chest and the back. Two big crosses are in it, one at the chest and one at the back, then 12 more crosses. Wearing the scheme has a very strict canon that should be followed by the anchorite. First of all, he or she has to read the 150 psalms daily. They have also to do 500 metanias daily. They have to live the life of silence. They have to pray the midnight praises daily. They have to continue reading the holy scriptures and live by the sayings of the saints. They have to fast daily until the sun set, and they have to keep eating, drinking, and sleeping to a minimum so that they reach mental and psychological serenity and purity. The next rank is called the hermit. 
And in this rank, the monks were described as St. Paul said in his epistle to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 38, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. There are two types of the hermits, the bodily hermit and the spiritual hermit, and the most famous example of the hermits is St. Paul of Thebes, the first hermit. The last and the highest rank is called the divine vision. In this divine vision or this rank, which in Coptic means Theoreia, the monk lives in unity with God, surrendering completely his will to God. So they can simply, we can simply saying that they are living in heaven and not on earth. The Bible tells us about this spiritual level in many places, as St. Paul spoke about his experience in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2 saying, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know, God knows, such a one was caught up to the third heaven. Also, St. John told us about his experience in the book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 10 saying, I was in the spirit in the Lord's day. So we can imagine this level at what we call the uh, divine vision is very high spiritual level the monk can reach after so many years striving against the sins and the wars of the demons. Now we ask an important question. What is the influence of the monastic life on the world? Actually, the monastic life or the monastic movement had a great influence on the world. We can see this in so many uh, places and in so many products resulted from the monastic movement. We can list them together right now. First of all, the world is benefiting from the prayers of the monks. And the history of the Coptic Church is telling us so many stories about the prayers of the monks and how much they were effective in many situations. Also, the monastic life provided an organized way for people who do not want to get married and they can live the life of chastity in an organized way. The monastic life also, through its saints, provided a role model for the life of perfection which Christianity seeks. And also, history is telling us about saints like Saint Anthony and others who had a great role in defending the faith and encouraging the believers in striving against persecutions and many of the spiritual wars. The monastic life also provides the spiritual leaders for the church starting from Saint Athanasius the Apostolic, the Patriarch number 20. He is remembered to be the first Patriarch to wear the garment of the monks because he was a disciple of Saint Anthony the Great for six years. And starting from this moment, all the Patriarchs of the Church uh, and the bishops as well were selected from the monks. It is also worth mentioning that most of the liturgical books that we have in the Church, like Agbea, like Synexarium, like the Psalmody and many others are products of the monastic life in addition to many developments that happened to the church rituals across the century. The Coptic monks as well have a very great role in evangelizing the Bible in England and in Ireland. History tells us that there were seven monks who traveled to England around the year 400 AD and they helped spreading Christianity in there and we can still find the influence of the Coptic art in some of the Irish and Scottish remains like for example the Celtic cross you can see now on the screen and finally many Europeans were influenced by the monastic movement which triggered the starting of a vast monastic movement in Europe starting from 5th century through a, a person known uh, by Saint Benedict of Nursia he was an Italian guy who uh, was influenced greatly by Saint Anthony and Saint Petronius, and he started his own uh, monastic group in Italy around the 5th century. This monastic movement in Europe later on will help spreading the, the Christianity even more and more after the discoveries of the New Age in 1492 AD. Now you can see on the screen more references if you want to dig deeper on the topics that we discussed today. Thank you for watching, pray for us, and see you in next episode. Bye!